Okay, so we open up Photoshop and we have some starting assets. Uh, we have the blue company logo, just a fake logo to use in, in our project. We have this stock image of a surprised businessman apparently. You can buy this from uh, Photodune. I'll uh, provide a link. And I've also created four PSD files with uh, the four sizes we'll be working on. So first of all, let's start with 300 by 250. Create a new layer. Oops. We'll call this BG. Command or Control A to select all and Command or Control Backspace to fill it with white. All right, now double click, stroke one pixel inside and we'll choose a nice kind of blue towards grayish color. Something like this, 8F969D. Okay, double click again pattern overlay and we'll add some grid patterns. Now before we do that, uh, I want you to go to premiumpixels.com. It's a website uh, created by Orman Clark. You'll find these 20 seamless Photoshop grid patterns. A very useful file. Uh, you'll find a bunch of, um, a bunch of uh, grid patterns there that you can use freely in your own projects. Very cool. Um, so go ahead, download those, install them, and you should have the whole package that I have here. And I'll be using Grid 5 with an opacity of about 6-7%, something like this. Click OK. OK. And uh, before we get into actually designing the whole banner, there, there is a thing that I wanna uh, that I wanna say. The key thing to making a successful banner is to keep it short and simple. Uh, banner ads are displayed amongst a large amount of information in a web page, so you really must be creative to get the user's attention. And because they get limited display areas, it's really important to get them. Um, to, to make them simple and very easy to understand. And you know what they say, less is more? Well, it's very true in, in our case because, for instance, if you use larger fonts and fewer words, uh, you'll be better off because uh, people simply don't have the time or the patience to read long messages. So again, to sum it up, keep it simple, use large fonts, very few words, and make your banner very straightforward and easy to understand. Uh, with that said, uh, let's move on to our banner. And I'm going to import the fake logo. Okay. Resize this to about 80 pixels in width something like this and I'm just gonna bring it down here f just for now okay uh, next uh, for the heading or the message uh, I thought of something like affordable prices affordable hosting sorry let me just make this black so you can see so affordable hosting dot zero hassle something like this okay let's align this and I'm just gonna position it like this for now it's not final but we'll get there now, the next element I want to put in my banner is the attention grabber. And that's where uh, this uh, businessman comes in. I'm just going to copy this. 
and paste it in. So I'm just going to use this um, stock image to make my banner a bit more interesting. Okay, it should be placed something like this. Okay, I think that works. You can play around with it if you want. Okay, that works for me. So we have the attention grabber, we have the logo, we have the message. All we need now is a call to action button. So let's grab the rectangle tool, draw a rectangle that's about, I don't know, 115 by about 40, not 40 by about 35 pixels. So 115 by 35, okay. Let's call this call to action. This will be businessman. So I'm going to use a gradient overlay for my button from 11 AC ED. Double O C O F F. Okay. Text should be find out more. Oops. And it should be white. So command backspace again to fill this with white. All right, uh, font should be Myriad Pro. I think I'll use a regular font and maybe 12 pixels. Now I think 14 works. So 14 pixels, something like that. And let's go ahead and style this base layer a bit more. Stroke. Let's add a stroke. Okay. Uh, just as a quick tip here, when you have a gradient on a button, for instance, and you want to add a border, um, it's a good idea to, to make a one stroke border and choose the darker color of the, of the gradient because on the top where the gradient is lighter, it's going to look something like this and as you can see it's a very cool effect uh, after that outer glow sorry inner glow change the color to white and change the size to one pixel so as you can see it just gave it a kind of an inner stroke that makes the button look really good all right so we have this I think I'll extend the button just a bit more, something like this, and go to custom shape tool. I'm going to grab um, this arrow here. And drag something like this, fill it with white, maybe a bit smaller. Okay. Call this arrow. Let's make this a bit bigger. Okay, and that's our call to action button. Alrighty. Now let's do something about this uh, this heading here because it really needs to stand out. And to do that, I'm gonna change the typeface to a condensed one and that is Lee Gothic and that allows me to modify the font size to about 30 pixels so you would have a bigger font 
in a much smaller space. That's the advantage of a condensed typeface. So I'm just going to position this something, something like this. Let's, let's move the businessman to the right a bit. Okay. And a really good way to make something stand out on a very light background is to use a vivid color. So for that, I'll use uh, I'll use an orange. And the effect that I want to get with this is I want to look like the text is selected. So to do that, change the text uh, color to white. Let's change the anti-alias to crisp. And this one, let's call it text BG. I'm going to change it to F16 C09. Okay, there we go. And as you can see, the orange looks really good with, uh, with the blue. So it's always a good idea to use these two colors together. And let's go ahead and zoom in a bit. I'm going to leave five pixels of padding uh, from, uh, for the text. OK, so let's do this. Five. Select the bottom corners again. Five here. Okay. I'm going to duplicate this. All right. And I also want to leave this space right here between the two words. So I'm going to go to a character and for line spacing I'm going to choose 30 pixels and then slowly increment this until I get exactly what I need so I think 40 pixels is what we need let's see this is this is 5 pixels in height okay so that's good Let's change this as well. Five pixels. And then five pixels. So this is what it looks like. Pretty good. All right. Uh, not much more we need to do here. Let's go ahead and position this. 15 pixels from the top. That's 15. And 15 from the left. That's 15. All right, call to action 15. And about Let's see, about 30, about 40 pixels, 30 or 40 pixels from, from the text. That should do just fine. And the logo, again, we need to position this something like this and 15 from the bottom. Okay, so there it is. Uh, this is our first banner, 300 by 250. And as I've talked uh, previously about the elements of a banner, we have the message, affordable hosting, zero hassle. We have the call to action. Uh, we have the branding and we have um, the attention grabber, you know, the element that um, 
makes your banner stand out in the page. All right, so let's move on to the next size, 180 by 150. This is a very small one, so uh, we're not going to have room for, for the image or the call to action. So instead, we'll just do the logo and uh, the message, the heading. So let's grab these, logo and let's call this heading. And also, I'll grab the BG uh, layer style. So these duplicate layers. Okay and create a new layer here, BG, fill it with white, and then paste layer style. Okay, so logo, align this, and then position it, 15 pixels, and then the heading, all I'll do here is center align the text, and center align the, uh, the, the text boxes. Save this and that's our second banner, as you saw really fast. All right, next one, 160 by 600. This is called a uh, skyscraper. And there's actually room for a lot of elements here. Let's start with uh, a new layer, the BG layer, paste layer style, fill it with white. All right, uh, let's see what we can grab. Well, actually, we can grab all the elements. So duplicate these in the skyscraper. So let's see uh, how we can. Uh, align them so we get a complete banner. First of all, the logo, center aligned in the bottom. Again, 15 pixels from the bottom. Okay. And what else? Affordable hosting, zero hassle. Now, the space here is a bit tight, so we can actually fit everything in two rows. We'll have to do it in three rows. But before that, I'll just grab the businessman since we'll be using him. Okay. I'm just going to move the call to action a bit lower to here. And let's figure out this, um, this message problem first. Okay, so it's going to be easier if we just separate this into multiple words. So we'll have affordable hosting and then the third word. Zero hassle. Okay, align these in the center and align the text in the center. Okay, let's start with this zero hassle thingy. Two, three, four, five. So that's set. And now the hosting. One, two, three, four, five. We gotta change the size of the of this one. Okay, that's good. And that's that's six and that's five. Five. All right. 
and this one from the top. That's five, and again, that's five. Okay, so affordable hosting, zero hassle. Let's move these up. Just making sure to leave one pixel of spacing between them. Okay, that looks good. Okay, we have the message. Now the businessman will go to something like this. And we actually have room here for another section. And, you know, this can be complement to the message. You can add uh, further, you know, details about the product, or uh, you can make the call to action a bit bigger. So for instance, if on the call to action, we were adding, let's say, call to, get a rectangle tool, size it up to something like this. It doesn't have to be exactly perfect. Call it base. Give it a quick gradient. And let me see if I can find it. So from 2A, 363F, <clears throat> excuse me, and it will go to 3F505C. Okay, that's good. All right, this is the call to action button. Let's add some text. Uh, the text should sound like, hmm, we also have a free hosting plan, for instance. Try Murid Pro, 14 pixels. Okay, change the, car the, the line spacing to auto, align this in the center of the page, and you can also make the free word bold. Okay, so we also have a free hosting plan. Change this to try it now or try it today or sign up today, for instance. I'm just gonna say try it now, right? So this doesn't have to be this big. Okay. So a couple of quick fixes around here. 15 from the top. Okay, the button should be about 20. Okay, and the base, just bring it up like this. Should be about 115. Something like this. All right, and you can grab the whole th the whole section you can grab the whole section and just bring it down like this along with the businessman and just leave 15 pixels uh, between the whole thing and the logo so there you go you have the third banner with some additional information or maybe a, a different layout uh, now it's time to move on 
to our fourth banner. And we'll do things a bit differently here because instead of a white background, we'll do a dark background. So let's do a new layer, call it BG. And I'm just gonna go ahead and grab the darkest color here, 2B3740. Okay. Uh, shift backspace, choose color, and choose this. Okay. All right, that's good. Double click, pattern overlay. Again, we'll choose a grid pattern from, uh, from the collection I told you. Uh, grid 5 again, only, only now on the white, it's called uh, grid 15. So opacity about 10% this time. Yeah, 10 should do. 10 should do just fine. All right. So let's grab the logo. I'm actually going to grab it from uh, one of the other from one of the other images. All right. Uh, now, obviously, the logo won't be sitting at the bottom because we you read this banner from left to right. So we'll have the logo here on the left. I'm simply gonna change the color of the text to white and I'm gonna nudge it by 15 pixels. All right. Um, now the banner since we're reading from left to right, should obviously finish with the call to action, right? So we have the logo, what we do, so the, the statement, the message, and finally, what should I do next? So the call to action should be on the right side. And let's grab uh, the call to action from this place, duplicate these two layers, Okay, so the base something like this and move it so it's going to look something like this. Uh, for a gradient overlay, I'm just going to go with a preset gradient. Uh, this kind of white towards gray kind of gradient. Uh, I'm just going to change its angle to uh, zero. So it will go from left to right. All right. Move the text, change the text color to the blue we have here. Text should be Text should be one row only. So align this with um, with your container here. The button also align it and just nudge it down to something like this. All right, so now all we need to do, um, we're gonna make this really simple and um, really make the message stand out. So for that, I'm gonna grab uh, our message, affordable hosting, zero hassle, along with the text background. And we have two options here. We can leave it like this. As you can see, the, the bright orange stands out really good against the background. Or we can, uh, we can inverse it. And by inverse, 
I mean something like this. Make the text bright orange and make the text background white. And I'm just gonna do something different now. Make this on a single row, which will allow me to increase the font size to about, actually I think it can go a bit higher to about 38. Yep. So 38 pixels. And all you gotta do now is adjust uh, the background. Okay. So there it is. Um, as I said, you can have it like this or you can inverse the colors. It's really your choice. Um, but yeah, this is it for now. We finished all, uh, all four banners. Uh, they each have uh, a, different, uh, a different layout for the elements depending on the size. Um, and speaking of size, there is one more important thing you must consider when making a banner and that is file size. Now some websites will have limitations regarding file size but if they don't uh, you should always try to aim for under 70 kilobytes for, for file size. Um, and you know that's always beneficial even if no one's you know telling you to to have a specific size or under a size, having a low file size will, you know, will help uh, with the page load. It will load faster, and that's always a good thing. So uh, even in, even our uh, banners, if we save for web, you can see that this one is actually 10 kilobytes, and it's a PNG 24. So really, really good file size. Uh, let's have a look at the others. This one is 52 kilobytes uh, for a PNG. If you change it to a JPEG um, with about 80% quality, quality, it's 40 kilo. So very good file size. All right. Uh, well, that was it, guys. Uh, sorry if this was a bit uh, longer than you expected for a quick tip. Uh, I just wanted to cover all the bases here. Uh, hope you find it you uh, found it useful make sure to leave your comments and subscribe to web design tuts uh, until next time thanks for watching uh, this is adi signing out